Hi there. Welcome to live stream Yoga with Louise tips and cues to keep you safe and strong on the mat. Today we are going to be weaving a little sacral song for the holy bow, focusing on the sacral and the pelvic area, waking up the energy system in the second chakra, centered around the reproductive organs. If your hips are tight or if your mojo is waning, then today's class is going to be particularly beneficial for you. As always, play where you're comfortable, modify where you need to open up the body progressively, especially if you're doing this class first thing in the morning and the body is still cold. Give your muscles a chance to open up progressively. Um, ease your way into child pose at any time, should you need a timeout or pause the stream if need be. You ready? Let's hit the mat. We're going to set up for today's class in a seated position. Situate yourself more or less in the middle of the mat. Bend the knees, connect the soles of your feet to the mat, and open up the feet nice and wide so that they, so that the feet themselves are maybe just inside the outer edges of your mat. Place your fingertips on the floor behind you and sit up nice and tall. Make sure that you're not rounding out um, and hanging off your bum bones. Sit up nice and tall. Situating yourself on those two bum bones, feel them firmly connected to the floor. You're going to drop both knees to the left while you look to the right. And then you're going to use that movement dynamically, flopping the knees side to side as you look over the opposite shoulder. Trying to ground both knees into the floor, pushing off those hands, floating your chest up to the ceiling. You're going to give me one more to each side and then end with the knees dropped to the left. Frame your lead leg on either side and focus on the right leg. You're going to flap the knee up and down, hovering it just off the floor. Think of the little wings of a butterfly just softly fluttering. Come back to your original seat on the mat and start dropping both knees side to side as you look over the opposite shoulder. I'm setting a moderate pace, but I'd like you to set a pace that works for you. You're going to give me one more drop to each side and then end with both knees flopped to the right. Frame the right leg on either side and start gently flapping that left knee up and down, hovering it just off the floor. Ease your way back to your original seat on the mat and drop those knees side to side. Exhaling as you drop the knees and then inhaling as you gently transition to the other side. Let's do two more. Then we'll end with both knees flopped to the left. You're going to use your left heel to hook over your right knee and just make both kneecaps nice and heavy to the floor. Come back to your little dynamic knee flow, side to side. Let's end right. You're gonna hold that stretch, hooking your right heel over the left knee, making both kneecaps nice and heavy to the floor. holding the stretch for a, a moment or two before you tuck yourself into easy sit, Sukhasana, tucking one heel in front of the other and let's all lead with the right leg in front. You're gonna sit up nice and tall and we'll work a dynamic twist. Opposite hand to knee, inhaling to transition, inhale to twist and hold. shooting breath as you come into the twist, pulling with your hand and almost softly resisting with the knee, making sure that you're sitting up nice and tall. Let's do two more and we'll end with a twist on the right and then we'll hold that twist. up beautifully tall, both bum bones grounded into the mat, peeking over that back shoulder. 
Now take a big inhale in as you come back towards the center line and softly fold forward, trying to drape your forearms on the floor or maybe reaching for a block and just finding a comfortable forearm stack position. Inhale, peel back up along the center and take a little side stretch to the left, placing your hand on the floor and just arcing and framing. Inhale, come back to center, gently fold forward. Let's do that on the other side, placing one arm along your body, sliding it away from you, softening through the elbow and the shoulder and just stretching, arcing overhead on the opposite arm. Ease your way back to center and start tracing a little circular pattern through the pelvis. You can bring the movement into your shoulders and your chest as well if you need to. Starting small and then starting to make your circle progressively bigger as if you were tra trying to trace over your knees with your chest. Inhale as you come forward and then exhale as you draw back, squeezing the diaphragm in as if you wanted to touch the front rib cage to the spine as you come back. Maybe giving me a nice little ujjayi exhalation as you come back. Let's do two more and then we'll change the cross of our legs and we'll come into Sukhasana leading with the left leg in front. Sit up nice and tall. Make sure you're grounding through both bum bones and start moving through that little dynamic side to side twist, making sure that you're reaching opposite hand to knee and pulling and resisting as you come into the twist. Once again, I'm setting a moderate pace. You can slow it up or speed it down depending on how your body is feeling today. Playing with a nice shooting exhale, wake up the energy in the body. We're going to do two more and we'll end and hold that twist on the left side of the body. Peeking over that back shoulder as if somebody was standing behind you, pulling and resisting opposite hand to knee, beautifully tall through the spine. Come back towards the center line and give me a soft little forward fold. Don't force the stretch, especially if the body is still cold. Just gently fold forward, making your forehead and your chest heavy to the floor while trying to ease your way onto the forearms. Then maybe gently pull your hip line back so that you can feel that activation into the sacral area. Ease your way up and take a little side stretch to one side. Let's do the left first, sliding that hand away from you, arcing and framing over the right, trying to open up through the ribcage and peek up towards the ceiling as you think of gently opening up the spaces between the ribs on the right. Inhale to come back to center and exhale to softly fold yourself forward. Inhale to peel back up. Let's take that little side stretch to the right, opening up gently through the ribs. Hold here for a few seconds, then come back to your start position and start to gently trace that little circular motion through the pelvis, this time moving anti-clockwise, so towards your left knee. Starting small, making your circle progressively bigger, with each rotation, bringing the movement into your shoulders and your chest if you need to, if you're really tight there. Using your breath, inhale as you come forward, exhale as you pull back, thinking of drawing the ribs back and tapping the spine behind you as you come back. Let's do two more. And then we'll ease our way into child pose via pigeon. Place your palms or your fingertips on the mat and pull or drag your weight forward onto the knees, sliding the right leg behind you and setting up a little pigeon line on the right. 
maybe gently swaying back and forth and just opening up through the pelvis and the hips. Pushing back into wide child. And then taking the pigeon line on the right. Just tucking the right knee up. Make sure that that knee is in line with your hip or slightly wider than your hip. And the knee and the ankle can either be lined up or tuck the heel closer towards the perineum, whichever does not cause you discomfort in the lead knee. Wiggle around, then ease your way back into wide child, big toes together, knees open nice and wide, arms long and extended on the mat in front of you, push back through the palms and sink your bum bones back towards your heels. Taking a nice little stretch here, make those bum bones as heavy as you can towards your heels. Then keeping your leg line as it is with the big toes together and the knees open nice and wide, assume a four point kneeling position on the mat and start to trace a clockwise rotation through the pelvis. Nice big circles, almost bumping the weight off your hip on the left, forward coming over your wrists, then bumping it into the right hip before you push back towards your heels. Nice big circular motions, keeping your back line nice and long and lengthened and your belly button pulled in. Come to stillness along the midline of the body and drop down onto the forearms. We're gonna marry a little frog with puppy. You're gonna drag the weight forward over the forearms and then push back as if you were coming into child, playing with that movement dynamically, trying to bring your chest and your chin almost flush to the floor before gently pushing back, trying to connect your bum and your heels. Play with it gently. Set a dynamic pace that is comfortable for you. Inhaling as you come forward and a nice exhale as you push back. Let's do two more. And then we'll morph from here into a fire hydrant like position on the right. Float your right forearm in so that it's parallel to the front of the mat using your left fingertips for support, pivot onto the right knee and then open and close the left leg in a little fire hydrant like movement, bringing the knee up to about hip height and then floating it back off, just off the floor. Shoot for 10 flowing repetitions if you can. Let's do two more. Then we'll ease our way back into child pose from here. Big toes together, knees open nice and wide, arms long and extended in front of you. Try to push back a little further. See if you can't get your bum cheeks to lightly tap or graze your heels. Keeping the big toes together and the knees nice and wide, assume your four point kneeling position and move straight into anti-clockwise rotation through the pelvic area. Keeping your spine nice and long, your gaze down on the mat, maybe just between the two hands. Belly button softly pulled in so that your lower belly isn't hanging on the mat. Let's do two more, then we'll drop to the forearms, dragging the weight forward as if you wanted to nod your chin and your chest to the floor and then pushing back as if you wanted to come into child. Playing with the movement dynamically. Remember to sync your movement and your breath. You can play and experiment with the inhalation and the exhalation, but make sure that you're not holding the breath you want to keep feeding oxygen to the muscles. Let's do two more. Then we'll find our way into that little fire hydrant on the left this time. Floating the left forearm in, pivoting slightly to the left, finding a stack on the left knee, and then opening and closing the right knee to the side. Floating the knee up to about hip height, 
and then bringing it back to hover just off the floor. Keep belly back into spine the whole time that you play. Let's do two more. And then we're going to bring ourselves into a floating butterfly position. Tuck your toes under and you can either keep your feet wide with a little bit of distance between the two feet. So front view, either toes wide on the haunches with the knees facing the side of the roof, or you can heel toe in so that the heels are touching, but your weight is on the toes. Pick your poison. Find your line on the mat. You're going to drop your right knee to the floor and you're going to float it up and down using your right fingertips on the floor for support. I would suggest for the first one to keep the feet um, a little bit further apart so that you've got enough room to play through the pelvis. Shooting for 10 soft taps of the knee, we're going to do that to the other side. And you can brace your other hand softly on your supported knee if you like. You can either stay here with the singles or you can start moving through an alternate side to side knee tap, bracing your fingertips on the mat as you float one knee at a time to the floor. If you're feeling good, you can give me hands off the floor and you can think of finding your little Cossack dancer and going into a little dance of your own. Find the sacral sum that works for you, either hands on the floor or no hands on the floor. All right, find your way back into your haunch position, wide on the floor or heel toeing your feet in and connecting the heels softly along the midline of the body. You're going to float up and down, just keeping the arms <clears throat> softly draped on the top of your thighs, trying to keep the weight on the haunches as you come down. So weight on the toes with the heels floating off the floor, allowing the knees to softly splay out. <clears throat> then end low on the floor, place the fingertips on the mat in front of you. Walk or take two or three little bunny hops to the front of the mat. Peel up, opening up your feet into a parallel line this time. We're going to flow through two rounds of moon salutation. If you're on the tall side, make sure that you're situated towards the top end of the mat with enough room to step back. Feet in parallel, tuck your tailbone under, pull your belly button in and float your hands to a modified Anyani Mudra with your palms open towards the ceiling. This will be your start and your end position for each round of moon salutation. Chandra Namaskar. Take a big breath in and float both hands to your lower back coming into the gentle arc through the spine. Bend the knees, fold forward, and then flow dynamically between the dynamic back bend and the soft forward fold, thinking chest to knees, palms up as you come down. The next time you roll down, take a big step back with your left leg. Turn both of your feet to the right, knife edging your back foot and firmly placing your front foot at 90 as you float your right hand overhead and behind you, getting into a little side plank modification. Then pivot, swivel in the opposite direction and dynamically side squat lunge. If you're cold, keep it at about waist height as you dangle the arms down. If you're nice and warm, take those hips and the groin low to the floor. Give me a side lunge to the left and ease your way into a plank lunge. Drop the knees and the shins to the floor and come into an extended puppy pose by sliding the arms on the mat in front of you, thinking of connecting your chin and your chest to the floor while piking your bum up to the ceiling. Then drag the weight forward onto your belly, set up a soft cobra line, tuck the elbows in, either stay here pushing off and trying to keep your bottom rib connected to the mat or play dynamically dropping the shoulders away from your ears in a soft serpentine-like motion. Then tuck your toes under, float your bum up to the ceiling, coming into a down dog frame and moving straight into blissful dog spananda by playing through the knees and the hips like a dog wagging its tail. 
then still your down dog and kick up into a three-legged dog on the left, trying to keep square through the shoulders and the hips. Change sides, kicking up the right leg behind you. Then swing or step that leg up one at a time. Think chest to knees, palms up. Roll back up into your soft back bend, supporting the lower back. And come back to your start position, palms up to the ceiling. Let's flow into the second half. Big breath in, take a standing back bend, exhale and fold forward, chest to knees. Then oscillate dynamically between the back bend and the forward fold. The next time you come down, take a big step back with your right leg. Turn both of your feet to the left, knife edging the back foot and firmly grounding the front foot at 90 as you flow the left hand overhead and behind you. Finding a side plank flow that works for you. Then pivot, face in the opposite direction and side squat lunge, Sahaya Arta Malasana, trying to drop down through the hips as you get warmer. Take a little lunge line on the right and ease your way into a plank, Kumbhakasana. Drop to the knees and the shins. Slide the arms out in front and find your little puppy pose opening up through your chest center. Beautiful Anahatasana. Drag the weight forward onto your belly, setting up your cobra or playing in spontaneous cobra, Sahaya Bhujangasana. Tuck your toes under, float your bum up to the ceiling, start moving through the knees and the hips in Spananda, blissful dog. Keep it playful, keep it light, keep it spontaneous. Still your down dog and kick up the right leg into three-legged dog, Tripada Adomuka Shvanasana. Let's do a little changeover. Swing through, stepping up one leg at a time. Fold forward. Find your little back bend and back to your start position. We'll do one more round. Big breath in. Take a back bend. Exhale and fold forward. Just think of giving these soft, fluid movements. No tension in the body. Keep it soft and pliant. The next time you fold forward, take a big step back with your left leg. Turn your feet to the right. Knife edge in your back foot and firmly planting your front foot at 90 as you float your right hand overhead and behind you. Soma Changasana, one and two. Then pivot, face the opposite direction as you dynamically side squat lunge, Sahaya Arda Malasana. Keep it soft, keep it flowing. <laughs> Give me a little lunge line on the left and then morph into a plank line. Set up your puppy by draping the knees and the shins on the floor, extending the arms long and lengthened in front and thinking of trying to connect your chin and your chest to the mat while piking your bum softly up to the ceiling. Drag your weight forward, set up your cobra, or play in spontaneous cobra, Sahaya Bhujangasana. Find your way into a soft down dog frame and then play with the movement, taking it into the knees and the hips in Svananda, blissful dog. Still your dog and kick up the left leg first on this side, bracing into both heels, squaring up to the shoulders and the hips and then changing sides and floating the right leg up behind you. Step or swing through. Finding that soft forward fold, chest and knees, palms up, rolling up one vertebra at a time to take your supported back bend and come back to your start position, palms up. Big breath in, take that back bend, exhale and fold forward. Find your rhythm and your flow as you oscillate between the two. Next time you come down, take a big step back with the right leg. Turn both feet to the left, knife edging your back foot, as you find your side plank flow. Pivot, face in the opposite direction, side squat lunge, draping your fingertips softly over the mat as you move side to side. Find a lunge line on the right and ease your way into a plank. Drop the knees and the shins to the floor and set up your puppy line. 
Drag the weight forward onto your belly, setting up a soft cobra to hold or play dynamically. Let go of all that tension in your shoulders. Ease your way into a soft down dog frame and move through the knees and the hips. Set up your three-legged dog on the right first. And then give me a little switcheroo and take it to the left. Step up one leg at a time. Thinking chest and knees, palms up. Peel back up into your supported back bend. Palms up to the ceiling. Pause here for a breath in Anyali. And then you're going to change your orientation on the mat. Stepping the feet out wide into a plie-like position and placing your hands gently on the hips. Make sure that your feet are softly splayed out at 45 with the knees comfortably aligned over the ankles. You're going to drop up and down through the pelvis, trying to open up through the groin and the inner thighs. Exhaling as you sink down and inhaling as you come up. Try to end low for me and float your hands into a goddess line with your elbows parallel to the floor. Think of squeezing a walnut between the two shoulder blades. Then drop your right elbow to the right knee, change the leg line, squaring up the back leg at 90 and straightening up the front leg as you take a little side angle stretch, giving me a long line from your fingertips through the wrist line to the back heel of your foot. Hold here for a second or two. We're going to morph into a rotated side angle from here. Tucking the toes of the back leg under, dropping your left hand underneath the left shoulder and floating the right up, hand up to the ceiling to take a little rotation through the trunk. Hold here, keeping those back toes tucked under. Make sure that you're not leaning the weight forward. Push back into the back heel. Stay here or come to that little side plank modification that we used in moon salutation by knife edging the back foot, squaring up through the front foot, and this time trace big circular pattern through the right arm. Holding that side plank modification. From here, we'll bring it into Skandasana, a low lunge. You're going to pivot on the mat, either keeping your lunge line small, maybe bracing on your hips, as you move side to side, or taking it low to the mat, dropping down through the pelvis, extending your supportive leg, toes looking up to the ceiling, maybe hands in prayer, or if you can, arms floating wide as you dynamically move side to side. Play where you are comfortable. You're gonna give me two more, and then we'll bring it into a deep squat from here. Heel toe your feet in, taking it as wide or as narrow as you need to, to float your hands into prayer in front of your heart, pushing actively into the palm and then using your two elbows almost as braces to push on the inside of the knees and feel that beautiful opening happening through the groin area. If coming low to the floor is not an option for you, just play higher up, Maybe bracing your hands softly on the hips or pushing softly with your palms on the inside of the thighs to coax the knees further apart. See where your body wants to be. Modify, play it up if you need to. Drop your fingertips gently to the floor. Heel toe out and come back into your wide plie line. Line up your knees and your ankles, hands braced on your hips as you gently lift up and down through the pelvis. Ooh, you should be getting quite a bit of feedback on those inner thighs and the groin area. Drop low, set up your goddess line, Utaka Konasana, squeeze that walnut between your two shoulder blades. Then drop down on the left, straighten up the back leg, square up the front leg, and take your little side angle stretch. Long line through the fingertips to the back heel, Stay, 
or rotate your side angle by pivoting onto the back toe, planting your right hand firmly on the floor, and then just taking a swivel through the trunk and floating the left fingertips up to the ceiling, pushing the weight into the back heel and holding the stretch here. From here, we're going to find that low lunge, skandasana, playing high or low to the mat, picking the arm position that works for you and trying to flow dynamically side to side, trying to drop your two um, bum bones as low to the mat as you can while you play. Then ease your way into a squat line. Push with those two elbows, open up through the groin. Pause here for a beat or two in deep squat, malasana. And then we'll ease our way from here back into our original line on the mat. Seated, nice and tall on the bum bones with the feet nice and wide and the fingertips behind. You're going to drop those knees side to side and try to notice how much the groin area has actually warmed up and opened up and how much easier the movement feels as you drop the knees side to side. You're going to give me two more, then we'll end lift and we'll flutter. So frame the lead knee and flutter that back knee off the floor, not quite allowing the kneecap to tap the mat. Come back to your side to side drop. Moving dynamically with the breath, inhaling to transition, and then exhaling as those knees lightly tap the floor. We're going to end right, and we'll flap the back knee. So frame your front leg, and then gently find that flittering or fluttering motion on the back knee. Come back to your side to side drop. We're going to end lift and we're going to find that little hook and hold using the front heel to hook around the back knee and then just making both kneecaps nice and heavy to the floor. Keep floating your chest up nice and high to the ceiling. Find that little sideways drop. You're going to stop right and find your little hook and hold using the front heel to hook around the knee of the back leg. Ease your way from here into Sukhasana, leading with the right leg in front. And dynamically begin twisting side to side with a nice little shooting breath. You're going to end right and hold. Bum bones equally weighted, spine beautifully tall, lengthening from your tailbone to the crown of your head. Then take a big breath in as you come back to center and softly drape into a forward fold, trying to connect your forearms to the mat while sinking your hip bones back as if somebody was standing behind you, holding onto the hips and pulling them back towards the back edge of the mat. Peel up and come into a little side stretch on the right, placing your right palm or fingertips on the mat alongside you, softening through the elbow and the shoulder and then arcing and framing on the other side to gently pick up to the ceiling, holding for a few counts here as you open up the rib cage on the left. Inhale and come back to center and softly take the forward fold one more time. Making the crown nice and heavy. Make sure that you don't have any tension in the head. Peel up along the center. Place your left fingertips or palm on the mat. Slide the arm away from you as you arc and frame on the left. 
maybe gently peeking up to the ceiling and trying to open up through the top side of the rib cage. Inhale and come back and start tracing a clockwise little circle through the pelvis. So moving towards your right knee. Begin that little pelvic uh, circle small. Start making it progressively bigger. Moving into the shoulders and the chest if you need to. Identify where your tension is and find the sacral song that works for you. Get your body humming like a fine tuned machine. Let's do two more in this direction. Ease your way back to center and change the cross of your legs, leading with the left leg in front. Start moving into those little dynamic twists. Using opposite hand to knee, pulling and resisting against the knee, keeping the spine nice and tall and giving me a nice little shooting exhale. You're going to end left for me and hold the twist. Long and lengthen through the spine, belly button firmly pulled into center, bum bones rooting into the mat. Fold forward, connecting your forearms to the mat, sinking your bum bones back towards your heels. Peel up along the center and take a little side stretch to the left. Soft to the elbow and the shoulder as you arc in front. Don't force the stretch. Don't feel that the elbow needs to touch the floor. Play where your body wants to be today. Inhale, come back. Exhale, softly fold forward, draping your forearms on the mat while sinking your bum bones back towards the back edge of your mat. Inhale to peel back up and exhale to softly take the side stretch to the left. Opening up through the ribs. Come back to center and start moving anti-clockwise as you trace that little circle through the pelvis. Inhaling as you come forward and exhaling as you squeeze the diaphragm in, almost purging all of the stale air out of the lungs before you take a new breath in. Come to stillness, we're gonna find our way to child via pigeon. Place your fingertips or palms on the floor, drag your body weight forward onto the knees. Front left knee, wider than your hip, at least as you slide the right leg behind you, gently swaying the body weight side to side and just finding your pigeon stretch here. Maybe nice and high on your spider fingertips. Ease your way back into wide child. Big toes together, knees open nice and wide, taking a soft extended stretch here. Pushing off your palms, sinking the weight of your bum bones back towards your heels. Then set up your soft pigeon line on the right, tucking the front leg into the position that works for you, wiggling your weight around so you can feel the groin opening nicely, shoulders and hip bones squared on both sides. Ease your way back into wide child. Knees and wide, big toes touching softly behind you, taking your extended stretch. Then hold the leg line as you come through four point kneeling and start tracing a clockwise circle through the pelvis. Keeping your back line nice and long and your gaze down on the mat between the two hands. Let's ease our way from here onto the elbows. Drag the weight forward as if you wanted to tap your chin and your chest to the floor and then push back as if you wanted to tap your bottom to your heels. Finding our little frog and puppy hybrid. Keeping that diamond frame through the legs. Let's do two more. And then we'll assume that fire hydrant on the right. 
Floating the right forearm in. Placing all the weight on the right knee. As you lift and lower the left knee, hip height, and then hover the knee back off the floor, pushing off the forearms softly on the stabilizing side. Keep belly to spine as you play with your fire hydrant. Two more, and then we'll push back into wide child. Big toes together, knees open nice and wide, taking your extended stretch. Hold the leg line, find four point kneeling and come straight into that little pelvic circle. Keeping your spine nice and long, belly button pulled in, gaze down on the mat between the two thumbs. Drop down onto the forearms. Drag the weight forward over the forearms as if you wanted to tap your chin and your chest to the floor and then push back as if you were trying to come back into wild child, wide child, sorry, with your knees open nice and wide, oscillating dynamically between the two. Keeping your belly button pulled into center as you play. Let's set up that little fire hydrant on the left. Float the left forearm in, pivot, and set up your little fire hydrant, opening and closing that right leg out to the side, keeping the bent knee position. Last one. You're going to find your way onto the haunches. Keep your first one wide so that there is quite a bit of distance between the feet. You're gonna drop your right knee to the floor. You can maybe place your left fingertips on the thigh for support. Embrace your right hand on the mat just to help with balance. Maybe 10 little flutters or taps to the floor and then change sides. Then either stay here with your singles or start playing dynamically with an alternate knee tap side to side. If the balance feels good, maybe you can brace your hands on your hips and find your inner Cossack. Let's do one more tap to each side. Then either keeping your feet wide or hopping or heel toeing in until you've got a narrower stance with the weight on your toes and the heels touching. Place your palms softly on your thighs as you float up and down, almost as if you were trying to bob your crown to the ceiling before floating back down. Assuming a frog-like frame through the legs and trying to keep those heels floating off the floor. End low. Then step or take little bunny hops to the front of your mat, setting up Moon salutation, we'll just do one flow. Stack your feet in parallel, float your hands into your modified anyali, palms up to the ceiling, big breath in, take a back bend, exhale and fold forward, then move dynamically between the back bend and the forward fold. The next time you fold forward, take a big step back with your right leg, or sorry, your left leg, turn both feet to the right, knife edging the back foot, and find your side plank flow. Pivot, face the opposite direction as you side squat lunge high or low to the mat. Arms are just soft and dangly, no tension in the arms. Give me a lunge line on the left and ease your way into a plank line. Drop the knees and the shins to the mat, set up your puppy line. Drag the weight forward onto your belly, setting up your cobra and releasing through the shoulders and the hips. Tuck your toes under, find your way into down dog. Move in blissful dog. Keep it playful, keep it spontaneous. Still your down dog and kick up the left leg into a three-legged dog. Pause here for a nice stretch before changing sides. Then swing through. Think chest to knees as you roll back up into your back bend 
and float your hands back into Anyami. Big breath in, take the back bend, exhale and fold forward. Playing with the back bend and the forward fold dynamically. And then as you come down, take a big step back on the right, pivot both legs to the left, knife edging the back foot as you find your side plank flow. Pivot, face in the opposite direction and side squat lunge. Ease your way from here into a plank line on the right and find your way into your puppy frame. Parting your bum up to the ceiling while trying to connect your lower belly to the top of your thighs. Drag your weight forward, setting up your cobra and maybe playing with that little shoulder wiggle and release. Easing your way into down dog and moving through the knees and the hips. Kick up your right leg first on this side, finding your three-legged dog before changing it up. Step up one leg at a time, finding your little forward fold. Peel it up, hands into your lower back for support. Come back to our Yali Mudra. Pause here. Allow the heart rate and the breathing just to come down a bit before you change your orientation on the mat and find your way into that little PA line, hands on your hips as you float up and down. End low and float into goddess. Try and hold that low line for at least 10 seconds if you can, squeezing that walnut between the two shoulder blades. Then find your way into a modified side angle. Extend the left leg, squaring up the front leg as you drop to the front elbow. Just lean that elbow into the thigh, push back into the back heel and give me a long line through the back leg and the top arm. Rotate your side angle, pivot onto the back toes, reaching with the right fingertips for the ceiling. Either staying here or finding your modified side plank by bringing the front foot into 19, knife edging the back foot and tracing big circular sweeping motions with the right arm. You're going to find your way into Skandasana, that low lunge from here. Playing with your hands, maybe in prayer, maybe nice and wide, reaching with your fingertips for the side of the room as you float side to side, maybe disconnecting the toes of the extended leg or maybe opting to keep them connected to the mat. Ease your way into a deep squat, heel toeing in, taking your squat line as narrow or as wide as you need to, to open up through the sacral area. Use your elbows, open up those knees. Find your way into your plie line one last time. Hands on your hips as you gently float up and down. And make sure that those knees are not collapsing in. So pretend somebody's pushing them from the inside. And low, and set up your goddess line. Crack that walnut between the two shoulder blades. <sighs> Drop your right, uh, sorry, left elbow to left thigh. Straighten up that back leg and find your side angle. Then start rotating through the trunk. Tuck the back toes under as you pivot. Thinking of forming a soft T-frame through the arms. Stay or find your modified side plank and start playing with that big sweeping motion through the top arm, tracing a big circular pattern with your fingertips. Ease your way into your skandasana, your low side lunge. Moving side to side. Maybe fingertips long and lengthened. We're going to end in Malasana. Deep squat, heel toeing in. Trying to hold your deep squat. Hands in prayer. Maybe closing your eyes. 
connecting to that sacral area, your Shwabhisthana chakra that we opened up beautifully with our sacral song today. And then end off your practice by just softly nodding your chin to your chest and whispering the words Namaste. Thank you so much for coming out and playing with me today. I hope that your hips feel open <laughs> and that you enjoy today's class. Remember to give me a thumbs up, shoot me your comments and your feedback, use the display window or reach out to me on WhatsApp or email. And remember to subscribe with your notifications on. I shall see you all for Pilates on the mat tomorrow. Till then, keep it light. <laughs>